four, three. Ah, oh, we're recording na pala. Welcome, welcome back again uh, to uh, Who the Heck Are We? Episode 19. Uh, I'm of course with the uh, three handsome uh, boys, or should I say men? So there's Jay De La Cruz watching the PBA from the bubble, right? Yes, I'm Lance, here. Uh, there you go, Lance uh, Fernandez. Uh, he's probably in the basketball court, and uh, Claro Manzano with his uh, shrock in the background. So. Uh, last week, recap lang, last week, uh, we spoke uh, with uh, Noel Zarate and uh, uh, the discussion was uh, the FIBA uh, Asia Cup, Asia qualifiers, and I believe there's uh, been uh, updates on that. Uh, hopefully, the rosters will be coming out soon. I believe the rosters actually did come out yesterday. Then called somebody, it. Oh, <laughs> called it. I, called <laughs> I, it. Think, I think somebody it pressed it and then somebody, oh, uh, it prema- uh, premature... Uh, uh. Pretty much your uh, post, uh, right? So I called it. Uh, <laughs> Itchy fingers, yeah. Then you called it, right? You called it, Jay. So called it. Um, and then uh, two weeks ago, it was uh, another guest, uh, uh, Kumar or uh, Enrico Ortiz from the Maharika FC, the goalkeeper, who'll be playing in the PFL uh, by next week. So oh, it's uh, gonna start. Best it's gonna game start. for him, right? Uh, so today, uh, tonight, uh, what I want to discuss is basically what. Uh, Uh, we discussed two weeks ago, which is um, sports and the grassroots, no, and uh, why it is very important for us or for an individual to be in sports, you know. So before that, I want to get more introduction. Uh, you know, it's already been 19 episodes, and uh, we actually uh, been giving our opinions. But what a lot of listeners do not know is what we've done in sports and how we got into sports, and you know. Uh, When since we were child childhood, no. So Claro, uh, tell us more of a background on sports and why you think sports is important and what kind of characteristic did it give you growing up? Well, me getting into sports, you could say. Yes. But we can go as a fan and maybe with me as someone who was also playing back when I was a teeny weeny kid. So <laughs> maybe as a fan, um, you know. Some memories as a kid is I remember sleeping and then I wake up, I'm in a basketball game. Yeah, so I was pretty small, you could say, and my parents would take me to basketball games. Yeah, I remember, I can even remember the first PBA game I went to and I was like senior kinder or something and I didn't really care about school that day. I was just excited. Oh, we got to watch a game. Yeah. We're going to have those hot dogs. <laughs> gonna have coke and everything right because oh. the hot dogs are good and pba used to play in ultra back then so just me being surrounded by it and seeing these guys hoop i could say right. it just got me just got me into it and never there's no looking back from there so in school it starts off with pe you have all that you want to play and have fun it just be like your idols whom you saw and then eventually it carried over to varsity Where I just I played some bas I played basketball from grade school all the way up to fourth year high school. But with just how everything works, the bottom line is it teaches you discipline because you have to juggle everything: your family life, social life, and your studies. Right. And of course, you know you have to commit to your basketball games or varsity games, whatever sport it may be. So there's the discipline there. There's the time management, and there's also health because you have to stay in shape. If you're not in shape, your your coach won't play you. Yeah. You're, if you're not in shape, you're not going to be able to perform at your best. So that's something that really carries over because it's not just in the side now. It's not just the side that I'm not going to play if I'm not fit. But you also learn to take care of yourself because right. I think the four of us are years out of playing, whether it be intercol or barangay or even varsity organized ball. And mm. we still make it a point to exercise, of course, and take care of ourselves. Right. That's right. Okay, How about you, uh, Lance. Uh, I, I remember one in one of our episodes. You you mentioned that uh, your ultimate fan was Alvin Patrimonio. Was he the inspiration for your uh, love for basketball or love of sports? Um, Patrimonio is my Filipino influence as far as basketball is concerned. But it all started when I was able to watch. Larry Bird during the latter days. This is not the championship Larry Bird anymore. Hmm. This was the 
Hurry back, hurry back. Hurry back, hurry back. Yes, that one. Hurry back, hurry back. Yeah, though, though his back is hurting, he was still hustling. So that got me fascinated. And that's essentially started my fascination and uh, allegiance to the Boston Celtics through the good times and bad. <laughs> so I've been a Celtics fan ever since. And uh, I am not really uh, a basketball player, but I did play baseball when I was in grade school. That was oh, really nice. my sport. Okay. So I was playing uh, left fielder, outfield, so left field. So that's my position. So I played for three years, grade three up until grade five. And then uh, from, from then on, there were just better players coming in in uh, our school. So from then, but that moment on, I wasn't able to uh, crack the team anymore and focus on studies as well. Uh, so what allowed me or what sports taught me is number one. Well, you have to keep yourself physically fit. As we always say, health is wealth. So no matter how many riches you have, if you are sickly, then um, you uh, won't be able to do uh, a lot of things and you won't be able to enjoy it. And uh, just like what Claro mentioned, discipline, hard work, and uh, the the people that you play with, your teammates, they essentially become your fraternity. It becomes your brothers. Eh? Up, until, up until you uh, go old, you still meet and you still have some reunions and just reminisce the good old times. So it's nice, it's nice to have those uh, sets of friends that uh, will be with you throughout your life. And um, you can um, ask for help whenever you need it. That's the real, cool, real quick, I thought Lance would mention a part where involves the over the back referee in connection to sporting <laughs> beginning. I was waiting for it. Well, but... we haven't we haven't found him yet, so he hasn't responded. So we've okay. uh, sent some feelers around, and uh, he hasn't responded to the call or the notice. So, well, I've mentioned everything that there is to mention about uh, him okay. and my uh, barangay liga days. <laughs> We're just waiting for him to respond. Who knows? Yeah. He'll, he'll, um, he'll, he'll sprout out soon enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the yeah. new listeners. Um, yeah. We lost yeah. Jay for a bit. But for the new bit, listeners yeah. and this over the back thing, you can check our episode in defense of the referees. Yes. Yeah. And it's actually some a good pretty stuff. good one. Yeah. Good one yeah. from yeah. Lance. Well, like, 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 with, like what the One Sports Movie mentioned, if you build it, they will come. So maybe if we put out the episode like we did, <laughs> Yeah. Maybe over the back will come from the cornfield and you never know. Yeah. yeah exactly. Wait, I have a question for you, Lance. So during during the time that you were playing uh base uh so, was it baseball? Baseball. You mentioned baseball, right? Yeah. Were you following the little league? Yeah, yeah, I was following all I, I knew all the controversy and all. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, we we'll get the back to that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get back to that later yeah. on. Because that that's a, that's a question that uh I'll I'll put out later. Right. Uh, yeah, oh, yes. Yes. yeah, that was big. Yes. That was a very actually <laughs> when when, pe- when there are people really who are uh, who don't accept anything else but a victory. Yeah, that, that's yeah, uh-huh. that's one of that's one uh, question we'll ask. So, oh, later on, later uh, on. Later. But very overage. good that yeah, very good, Jay, that you are not oh. yet familiar with what happened there. But oh, since uh, the, uh Lance, since the uh, NLCS and the ALCS are on. Uh, who are you supporting? Uh, so for ALCS, because I hate the Houston Astros because of what they did cheating. years ago. <laughs> so yeah. I go for the opponent um, okay. automatically. Tampa for Bay. Yeah. Tampa Bay. And uh, what's funny is uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup. So if ever yeah. the race crack into the World Series, then it's good times for Tampa Bay. And well, Tom Brady and the guys are still competing in the NFL. So there's a good chance that Tampa Bay might hold the three titles. So, yeah. sayang, if Miami ever won the title, but of course, Jay would argue that they won't. No, they uh, won't. Just, <laughs> imagine, just imagine if that happened, no, all, all, all four major sports championships will be in yeah. Florida. And God bless yes, Florida. Yes, that's right. But, you know what, what, what? There's a chance because in the NLCS, it's actually the Braves and the LA, LA Dodgers, right? So Yeah. yeah so. Well, 
Uh, for NLCS, no yes, I go for the Braves. Yes. Because the Dodgers are so perennial. Much. Chokers. <laughs> no, they, been, they, they, they choke. They're chokers. They, yeah. They've been the strongest team ever yeah. since Dave Roberts came in. But they, for some yeah. reason, they always just find ways to lose, whether it's in the World Series uh, or the PS. Actually, yes. Chokers. Uh, something actually, just, I, I have to actually agree on that. That's something <laughs> something wrong is bound to happen for some reason. I'm not sure if they have a curse or whatever. But that has been their story for like for half a half a decade yeah. already or or better a decade half actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that has Sila been their trajectory. Sila yung Clippers of baseball, di ba? And they're also based in LA. There's two teams yeah. in LA. Yeah. yeah. But I don't honestly know if the Angels are like... Actually, there are three know. teams in California pala. Oakland. Oakland, the Anaheim, Oakland. and San Diego. And yeah. San Diego Padres. Yeah. Pero like Padres. LA, there's two pretty much donning the name. Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if so, the Angels are like... Andre, Andre ke lang ng name kasi ng Angels because they call themselves the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Oh, they're so, in Anaheim. They're so not... you're Anaheim, pero you claim to be Los Angeles. Los Angeles, yeah. Lang, ha? Well, there you go. So, ikaw mm. naman, Jay. I mean, before that, even though it breaks my heart, and mm. I'm sure it also breaks uh, Lance's heart. No, I don't. No, I... We do not want to congratulate you for the win. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys deserve the asterisk challenge. No, my, my heart melts whenever you mention for Kobe, so I'm good. But for everything else, well, I... Uh, but we will have we will have that uh, debate of the goat and mm. all that. But uh, it was good that you guys won the Asterix Championship. No, it's not. No. <laughs> no it's all right, Jay. Tell us more about your uh, your uh, you know why sports is important to you, what influenced mm. you, and then what what kind of characteristics mm. did sports bring out in your in your life? So the thing about sports is what it really taught me. The most important thing that it taught me is teamwork, right? Because you have to remember, you have to think about it that in a team sport, it's a given fact that all of you in the team have that one goal, have that one common goal, diba? Right? And if you have that one common goal, you actually are, you will submit yourself to do everything to achieve that common goal. Whether you're the superstar, whether you're the supporting, the role player, diba? Right? Or even if you're the 12th man of the team. O kaya ikaw man yung utility na hindi naglalaro. To share, an ex- to share an experience actually, nung high school ako, I was a part of a varsity team. Badminton. I was a badminton player. Oh, wow. See, that, oh. wow. See, there's a lot of surprises in this. Oh. In this, ano? Oh, badminton, no, baseball. Oh. Yeah. Gulat ako. I, I, Kala ko Tagalog word eh. Hindi. Pipigil eh. I'll well, do if, my best. If to, anyone to, can to find the Tagalog equivalent of badminton, <laughs> hey, that's got guys a genius. <laughs> <laughs> badminton, we'll okay, find, go we'll ahead. We'll find that one soon. Pero, Sorry, Sir Jay, back to you. Oh, but yeah. actually, in that, in that experience, nung, ano, uh, nung varsity, kasama ako sa varsity team ng badminton, I was part of the team, I was training, training with the team, so kung ano yung ginagawa ng mas magagaling kong teammates nun, yun din ginagawa ko. Pero, I was never the one who competed in an actual uh, event talaga or tournament. Wait, Kasi, di ba, uso rin sa basketball yun na ano eh. Na you have practice players, di ba? Na they're not actually part of the team, of the final roster, but they attend practices. They also get paid to be as practice players and to be asked to do anything to help uh, the actual team uh, sa kanilang practice. Yeah. For example, halimbawa, if you ask one guy there to defend like the to defend like this, if you defend like the most uh, sabi natin, most physical player, yun yung gagawin ng role player, gagawin ng practice player, di ba? So that's actually my role din sa team na yun. If I am asked to do anything, if I'm asked to replicate yung ginagawa nung in-scout naming player, I'll do it. Yeah. Di ba? Because we have, I learned in that team that we have that one common goal. It ends to win a championship, di ba? And again, if you understand your role in the team, pare-pare siya makukuha yung goal na yun. In the end, magiging masaya kayo. You'll be, as jubilant, you'll be, you'll feel triumphant as the uh, main man of that team pag nakuha nyo yung goal na yun. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that, that's a very interesting 
uh, topic that you mentioned, teamwork, and then Lance mm-hmm. mentioned discipline, and then um, Clara also mentioned discipline. And you know, when in we all came from sports at a young age, tama? Latay, we, we played baseball, badminton, we played basketball. Clara, Correct. did you play football? Yeah, I did a bit. Um, I did a quarter in prep. <laughs> Prep. And then <laughs> I play around. I play around after school with my friends in between classes. Also, in our leather shoes. So, yeah. I've tried play. I've done, I've tried doing that during PE, playing football with leather shoes. So because, because I I forgot my rubber shoes, so they made me the goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, twice the toughness of the position. Yeah, and what what I could say also, they make me goalkeeper, um, in you know whatever normally is because of basketball experience, hand-eye right. coordination. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned that you mentioned that earlier, uh, in our previous in our previous um episode. Now, earlier, Kanina I asked Lance about uh controversies, uh, the little especially the little league, diba? As as a young kid, diba? We're taught. Uh, the fundamentals or skills, how to dribble, how to kick a ball, you know, and or and and how to smash or use a racket correctly, right? Uh, but what else do you think that is instilled in us, whether it be skill or whether it be uh, characteristics that should be brought in in life, or what should not be carried in life? Uh, mm-hmm. One aspect of the little league, yeah. That uh, even though it's not youth, there was something wrong, neba. Right? And Lance, would you want to elaborate on actually what happened? And it, this is not a secret. This is not. This is not something that we should uh, hide because it actually was something that was written and worldwide, and it was a, a very embarrassing moment for the Philippines. So mm-hmm. it is again. Okay, okay, uh, Lance, you just explain what happened. So, <laughs> the, uh, so it's, it's embar- it's embarrassing. there there oh, are two, to, uh. there are two <laughs> vivid instances of this happening. It basically boiled down to fake birth certificates. So there's an age limit for little league, eh? and then what the uh, the organizer of the team did, uh, they uh, fake the birth certificate so that the player would look like uh, suitable for the age group of the little league. So when uh, the Philippine team, this is instance number one, the Philippine team won the title. Yeah. But it was eventually revealed that some of the players had bogus birth certificates. So mm-hmm. uh, it's a good work of investigative sports journalism. So they were eventually able to unearth. So they were stripped of the title. And uh, the more popular instance of uh, tampering birth certificates that I can remember from the Little League, there's this uh, kid named Danny Almonte. Yeah. So uh, they claimed... Pitcher. He was him, a pitcher, right? Was he the pitcher? Yes, he was a pitcher. Was they the claimed pitcher, him yeah. to be 12 years old. 12 because it is the limit of Little League. Eh? Mm. So, so he was 12 or so proclaimed, but he was dominating the opposition like he was getting strikeout over strikeout after strikeout. And he was a tall kid. So... He was 12, quote and goat and tall. So he was uh, deemed to be a prospect. But eventually, it was revealed that when he was playing, he was already like 14 or 15. And uh, there was a documentary made about him. And it, it essentially crumbled his uh, baseball dreams because he was seen as a bogus guy. And uh, that shunned away a lot of scouts. And that shunned away a lot of even the universities too recruit him so it's essentially uh, um, destroyed his baseball future but uh, it was not his fault because again I've mentioned earlier if there are people who are really needing that victory not just wanting but really needing as if uh, they won't accept anything less then uh, cheating incident- incidents like those are bound to happen so that's right that's right the Philippines Oh, sa ligang barangay nangyayari yan. Yeah. No? Oh. Sa mga ligang barangay yun eh. Pero Para ito pa, na, na, ano, they, they, they flew pa to Florida. Was it Florida? And then they beat the Americans, I think. I, I, yeah. They beat Americans. And the Americans were so heartbroken. Imagine that. They were so heartbroken. Mm-hmm. They, they were one of the tops. Eh. Top, oh. top countries to win. And then, 
the, the siyempre, the Philippines, it was so big that we won. They came back and we, act, we actually even had a parade for them. Nah. I remember that we had a parade for oh. them. Mm. And, and it's, it's, it's such an embarrassing moment, right? it's, quite, oh, yun nga lang, it's quite surprising that they're gonna do it in an international scale. I mean, yes, in the Philippines, also, also yun, di ba? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Was this? Me, um, kita mo, nasa mosquito siya. Pero ano, ano yung hype niya? Pang midget na, mga ganun, oh. di ba? Or I can say, I had a bunch of opponents. Bata pa ako nun, ah. May mga bigote na yung mga kalaban ko. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, Hubert hits early. <laughs> I was like 11, 12 years old, and yeah, these guys had full blown mustaches. It's not the thin one, ah. This medyo oh. makapal na yung bigote nila. Yeah, ang mama talaga. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we don't really know in this situation because honestly, this wasn't a big league again, like mga paya, MMBL. These right. were even smaller leagues, so. Perhaps there's the quote unquote benefit of the doubt. But what's if I can chime in here, what's what's yeah, not right. nice about putting overaged players is well, first you're gonna make yourself look good. That's fabricated. You're gonna make that kid look good. Hmm. Um next, that kid will suffer in the long run because that kid will be used to just taking advantage of physique. Oh, he was Most, already red dug there. Even though he has that, he had that potential, diba? He did. Pero, yes, he was very a great good. teacher. Yes, he was yeah, very he good. Was very good. He was banished because of yeah. because not because of the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. because there was a perception that because he was overage, he was dominating younger mm. uh, players. So that's why there's this perception that he's only good when he's playing with younger players. So how oh. would he fare the same if he played? people of the same age if not yeah. older yeah, so good point. those were the questions that uh, revolving around Daniel Monte when his age was revealed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. regardless of sport I think you'll develop bad habits also eh, in that situation Your trick, you'll get away with tricks with kids who are much smaller that tricks won't work when you're in the pros or playing a division up so and what's one thing of playing over age in whatever sport uh, whether midget basketball pero hindi midget talaga yes. or Whatever sport, <laughs> yeah. Whatever sport. Um, what's not nice here is that some the, again development gets hampered. Maybe kids also will get um, disheartened. You know, what am I doing wrong here? Right. Or, or maybe right. the sport right. isn't for me. Pero yun pala over age. Right. So there's really a mismatch in this mm -hmm. situation, and it's not the fault of this kid here who doesn't feel bad because of good. course. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Very good question. When you're playing, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. exactly. It's not actually the kid's fault. Because, I mean. If he doesn't have an idea na hindi pala siya pwede maglaro doon, I mean, someone else could have may, someone else could have done it, diba? I right. mean, kung, sa, kung alam siguro ng bata na bawal yung 14 years old, I, I don't think he'll play. That's diba? right. No, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Hindi niya kasalanan yun. Somebody yeah, bo bottom else, line, they were manipulated to play. Yo, they had no yo, That's yeah. the worst. Yes. Because that's, yeah, there, there were people who needed to win and they used some youngsters to bring that victory for them. Right, that's true. Uh, that's true. Yeah. So before I know, I, I forgot to to mention my my background in sports. So uh, I've been I love sports since I was like four or five years old. You know, and I learned basketball. I did not go through my little best or anything. So I was really a, you, you call that uh, um, backyard basketball. That's where I learned everything. Basketball. I learned mm -hmm. I. I, I I was learning through watching, so I watched a lot of the PPA. Uh, as you know, Mon Fernandez is a good friend of my, of my, um, of my mom. So I idolized him. I don't. I so, I so idolized um, what's his name? Uh, Winnie Henrelao. You know. So so my my love for sports was because of basketball, right? And then, and the NBA was John Stockton. Then I also uh, went into football, but I really concentrated. On, on basketball and, and it gave me a chance to to play overseas so I played in uh, Bangkok China Korea Japan Taiwan and uh, I was also chosen to be in the RP team the uh, 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 RP pool but I, I didn't pursue that you know I didn't pursue that anymore because I wanted to study I wanted to study sports management so I looked at that but I did I was asked to uh, play in the Philippine team but uh, I only so go to two weeks now like training done no but uh, for me, what got me, what gave me the, uh, uh, what sports gave me is this, uh, is uh, work ethics, discipline, uh, you know, waking up early at, 
like before when I was in college, I my my when I was uh, asked to play the RP team, our our training was in the morning. That's five thirty in the morning, and our university training was at six thirty at night. So I would wake up at four to go to RP and then study and then go uh, train the next day at, at night. So siguro mga two weeks yon, you know. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and, and that gave me a lot of my my um my uh, discipline in life also, and and not to give up. That never to give up, you know. Even though you're losing, and if you lose, it's okay. It's not the mm. end of the world, you know. Winning is not everything. It's not the end of the world, you know. And 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 work ethics, you know. And I'll I'll go back to the to the the question, no. Uh, and then I'll go to you, Claro. Also, is tama. There are people that influence our lives, our coaches, right? Our coaches and our sports managers, and like basically what this pitcher had to go through. The coach probably knew what was happening, and he allowed it. But they're saying that um, that uh, the two most powerful words in the English language is "coach says." So, if a coach says that, I have to do that. If coach says this, I have to do that. So, what do you think, um, especially in grassroots, that we need to instill, or coaches need to instill, sa mga bata? Right. But Clara, before we go to that question, you said you wanted to give us uh, questions about two. You had two personal, uh, overage stories. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, but we weren't and really overage. <laughs> yeah, and then you could go through and go to the other question I mentioned. What is it aside from aside from skills, aside from uh, the philosophy of sports? What else do you think that kids should uh, have in life that coaches could instill? Okay, don't t- tell your story first about. Yeah, well, before that part where the kids where k- kids need to really learn things from their coaches in terms of values. Well, first the overage stories was, I was playing in this game. It's 11, 12 year old division, and I was 12 years old, sakto, in the cutoff, and then my brother was in the stands. I found out about this after the game, and there were a bunch of people pointing at me and my teammates. Oh, yon si number one, two, three, four, five, six, sila overaged also. Oh, oh, and I was one of the players that those people pointed at. <laughs> oh, so you were just saying that you were overaged? Yeah, but I wasn't, and it was okay. me. It was they were pretty much pointing at the Big Ben. Okay, it was okay. a village league, inter league in Makati, and that's what I, that's what happened oh. and then there's this one my younger brother in football he's pretty tall for his age growing up what age was that like 10 that a coach didn't want to play the game and he was asking for my brother's birth certificate oh. and they called me up you're home right can you look for the birth certificate but uh, thankfully um the you know tournament registration was done properly yeah. So they were able to prove the age there on the spot, I think, through the staff. But anyway, going through the va- um, values that coaches can communicate, of course, other than learning the basic fundamentals of the game, I think there's proper attitude that you pick up from your coaches. You know, If you're a kid and maybe your coach starts cursing, you might think it's okay, right? Because you're a sponge when you're a kid because you take after your elders, whether it be your siblings, parents, coaches, teachers, whoever. So that's one thing. So the, here the coaches have not only have to teach them the proper ways, but to also lead by example. And another great thing maybe you can apply is maybe, I don't know how they apply, but for football, maybe you can teach them fair play, how it works, yeah. you know, when they play the ball out and what the crowd, and when the team would practice fair play, the crowd would applaud. I think that's important that you have to acknowledge it because when you do so, you get to teach it to other kids. And showing them sportsmanship maybe when you're small you don't know the value of shaking hands after the game and you do it just for the heck of it yeah but it, it starts there when it's young because as you age you got you start to see the importance of all these things that were taught yeah it's true that's true especially especially with sportsmanship now is you see a lot of that in the olympics they help somebody falls down you help them up somebody gets lost in the in the marathon you know and then they they put them back on track and stuff jay what about you Oh, the thing is, I'm not really focused on the coach or on the players because because if you're an athlete or if you're a if you're an no, we lost CJ. We kind of lost you for a bit. So... We encounter a lot of coaches. <laughs> 
it's from the bubble you will have okay. that same okay lance feeling bubble <laughs> mr feeling bubble <laughs> so we wait wait before that we have michael bubble then we have feeling bubble and from the bubble jay we lost you for a bit uh maybe you could come back you were mentioning that uh uh it's not really the coaches but it's the athletes yeah Take a go, Jane. I'm back. I'm back. Yes, you're back. There you go. Yon, I'm back. Yon. <laughs> and I was mentioning lang na I'm more focused on the individual because you're gonna encounter a lot of coaches, eh, di ba, in your life. Sa elementary mo, elementary days mo, you're gonna have a different coach. High school, you're gonna have a different coach. College, you're gonna have a different coach. Pagdating mo ng professional, you're gonna have a lot of different coaches all throughout your professional career. And those coaches have different perspective, eh. It might be positive, it might be negative. Even those negative, sabi natin not so good sa paningin ng isang tao, it's gonna, there's gonna be a reason behind it and that reason would be very rational naman. Yes, so sure. as an individual, if I wanna focus on take everything that is good dun sa mga iba't ibang coaches na yon. Claro, made an example kanina na yung shaking hands and all. One coach would, says, would say na tama part of being a sport eh, and the competition is over. But for some coach, they might say that that is accepting mediocrity, di ba? It's also a lesson for you na kailangan ma-improve ka, go back to the gym. Umalis ka muna, you're a loser right now, di ba? May ganun perspective eh. Sabihin, mo, sabihin natin yung pangit, pero it's a rational thinking, di ba? Yeah. And it's also a way na to send a message or to motivate yourself as an individual, di ba? To work harder. So, if anything, as an individual, you have to focus on everything that is good. Do sa mga nakikita mo sa coaches yan, take everything and it will result to you na yun nga, yung matututunan mo sa iba't ibang mga coaches. And it will give that individual a better understanding of ng ibang atleta or ng ibang coach, yung mga kapwa niya, mga kapwa niya players, na masasabi natin bakit sila umaarte ng ganito. Diba? May intindihan mo yan as an may intindihan na as an may intindihan yan as an individual and pag naintindihan niyo nung isang individual na yun kung ano man pinagdadaanan ng player na yun kapwa niya athlete I think the conflicts would be less eh, sa sports in general whether it's in the game or outside the game right yeah it's mm -hmm. actually it's very true you, you go through a lot of coaches especially if you're a, an athlete huh? mm -hmm. and uh, tama you you pick the the good ones and you pick you try to enhance or try mm -hmm. to uh, improve on the good ones, and every rational and every move, and they say every every action there's always a rationale, right? yes. whether oh. it's a good one or not. We don't know. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, Lance. Well, I think um, there's uh, you can define coaches with their goals based on the level of competition. When you are in grade school or elementary, what defines a good coach is someone that can make everybody happy while playing. You know, um, there there is a goal to win, but the coach you have in grade school, he is uh, the the one who cracks the most jokes, something like that, and just making everybody feel welcome in there, as if you are really playing uh, a game. That's mm -hmm. how uh, grade school coaches will uh, let you feel when you when it comes to high school. The best coaches tend to be the ones who develop the skills of the players. When you come to college, these are the ones who hone the skill at the same time, teach you how to uh, have a deeper appreciation for the game. And then when you go to the pros, the best coaches tend to be the ones who can balance the egos of the players. Because in, in the pros, everybody is skilled. Everybody has talent already. It's just a matter of balancing the egos and uh, the, goal, the personal goals of everybody you have on the squad. And... Um, Throughout those stages, um, there's one thing common that uh, encompasses all stages. The best coaches tend to be the ones who can make the game relatable uh, through everyday life, to everyday life. Like They always use situations within the game to motivate their players not just to do better in the game itself, but in other aspects of life. That's why... You always revere the likes of a John Wooden yes. or a Phil Jackson because 
their bread and butter is basketball for, but for some reason they are able to translate the the learnings from basketball that you can apply them outside to everyday right. life so that's why um that's one great uh, trait of a coach regardless of level the how do you fit the game or how do you take nuggets from the game and use it as a moral lesson into a bigger game which is the game of life so Correct. yes that's why that's uh, the greatest trait that coaches can have that's actually very good and like john wooden is such a he's such a great coach but not only yeah. such a great leader and such a great influencer in life he he extracts uh basketball you know character whatever you are inside in the court in the court and then also outside no yes and then and a lot of uh, nba players uh attributed his their their you know their their attitude or their characteristics to john wooden right? and and mm-hmm. And uh, also John Thompson, the one that usually at uh, Georgetown, the one that called. Dude. Oh yes, yeah. Allen Iverson would Allen vouch Iverson. for the guy. Yeah, yes. he really loved the guy and said that he was yes, like yes. a father, and you know he taught me life. You know, and mm-hmm. and I think that's 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 a very good point that you mentioned, Nance. Now that uh, each each coach in the stage of an athlete gives a different kind of uh, uh, skill. No? But do you think that in the grassroots level that we uh, coaches? should also teach that kind of skill, life skill. Claro. I think yes, again, because it goes back to, you can't, bottom line is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And whenever you need to teach something for kids, if you want them to develop, you start them young because you're doing it day in and day out. It piles up into years. And the next thing you know, that's something that got to form me as a person. Um, speaking of these life skills and everything, like I totally agree with everything Lance said, but I think someone we can also add is Coach Carter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> yes. And he, you know, just based on what you see in the movie, um, mm. he is more concerned about his grades. But this movie is based on a true story. Yeah. And he is concerned about grades yeah. and putting his kids, players, into college. Yeah. Because that was such an extreme situation. He said, oh, for these boys there in Richmond, you're more likely to end up in prison rather than college. And right. he wanted to help those guys. And you just by doing that, you get to change their future. That's but right. it's a bit, um, for him, it was a little bit of a clutch play of changing these guys late in high school. But ideally, things should start out in day one in the grade school level or even the kids who play you know, when they're, just trying things out at the preschool at preschool age. Timo Cruz, remember? Timo yeah. Cruz. Timo he was doing Cruz. he was doing Steph Curry stuff before. Yeah, Steph, Steph Curry, Curry stuff. Curry. But he didn't want to study. That's the only kink in his armor. Yeah, he had to do. <laughs> that was a lot of push-ups. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I I was just looking at the 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 quote that he mentioned. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Yes. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens. I think. I think if anyone watched uh, Coach Carter, I think that that part in the gym where he, where he stood up and then said that you know uh, that that quote. I think. I think that that really gave every mm. basketball player goosebumps. No. So. Oh. For uh, me, what stuck, I know, young interview, LeBron James, I'm the only Ty Crane. <laughs> he shot the interview. But that's just on, that's just on a light note. Yeah, we but shall, uh, Timo... we shall not mention uh, LeBron James in this. Uh, yeah. But this Timo <laughs> Cruz thing. I thought it was only the Lakers. Yeah, <laughs> this Timo right. Cruz thing is the highlight of Coach Carter. So that was a fantastic read. Yeah, that was a very, very good. Uh, okay, I'll Jay, Jay, do you want to uh, uh, give your uh, no. two cents regarding this? Actually, the thing is, you have to know, because if you're a coach, you have to also you have to understand as well. Yung mga, lalo na if you're coaching very very young people, very very young kids, you have to know that those kind of age, yun yung don po yung values formation, eh, de ba? Kung ano yung matutunan nila at that age, babaunin nila yon hanggang don sa pagtanda nila, de ba? Or as they go on with their life. So, if anything, for me, what a coach to really of uh, 
one yung, yung values yung values kailangan nilang instill doon sa mga bata and second thing is yung kung paano matututo um, yung mga bata by themselves yung there naging robot ata I say this in college eh. <laughs> yeah so Jay sorry na wala ka as if Jay is landing as if Jay is landing a plane Oh, 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 uh, nawawala ako. Nawawala yeah. ka eh. Nasa From bubble eh. Oh. Yeah. Nasa bubble ka eh. Naging... Naka-bu- naka-bubble din yung signal na internet. Naka-bubble. <laughs> oh. Parang force field sa Voltes 5, di ba? Blocking oh. the signal. Oh. Oh. Tama-tama. Naka-bubble din yung signal. Pero, one quick thing lang though is, aside from the values na kailangan ituro ng mga coach sa mga, mga bata, they should also teach them the importance of how to learn. I say this in college, It's not what you learn, but it's how you learn a thing. Diba? Mm-hmm. Kasi from there, uh, kahit sino pa yung maging coach ng bata na yon, that kid would have his own way to learn things or has his own way to learn what the coach wants him to learn. Diba? Yeah. Para in that sense, kung sa limbawang mapunta sa coach na sabihin natin very tough on him, mm. tapos yung bata, ano siya, very sensitive siya, diba? or very very emotional ang kanyang uh, upbringing di ba once he learn how to he wants he once he learns how to learn something in his own way the emotions will get out of his way baka kalimutan yon and easily he'll motivate himself and by himself matututo rin siya parang self motivation na parang yes, yes, yeah yes, tama di ba plans When you say grassroots, I think you can only learn the game, the fundamentals and the basics so much. Pero the challenge for your coach. So once your wards already learned how to pass, how to dribble, how to shoot, what else do you teach? So that's where the life lessons come in. So while you are teaching, like let's say, how to defend a player, So how do you translate it into something bigger? Like, if you're not, uh, you can say something like, if you're not getting the drill immediately, it's because somebody has to start somewhere. So you you have those nuggets where in you translate it to everyday life. That if you want to achieve something, you have to start somewhere. You're not automatically good from day one. So I guess that's uh, how you should uh, implement grassroots coaching aside from the fact that you have to recruit first and pick the interest of the players because uh, that's uh, where you are able to build a massive pool of players who are interested to learn the game so after building that pool and teaching them the fundamentals of the game let's say if it's football how do you position if you're a defender how do you play properly if you're a midfielder you can teach that up to a certain point But the the lessons, the moral uh, the moral uh, extraction of lessons from these uh, facets of the game. That's uh, the next level that uh, coaches with uh, coaches in the grassroots level should instill. Because right. if you are brought up very well from the grassroots alone, if you bring them to higher stages, then you already have players or competitors that have been uh, built well from the start. Yes. So you wouldn't problem their, char- their character, their integrity, their determination is not a problem because they've built it since they were young. And it has been there. It has been inculcated to them by the coach. That's right. That's right. So basically from what I'm hearing, it's, uh, it's the body, which is the technical, you know, the skills, the mind, which is mental, uh, motivating people, the discipline, and what's important is the heart. So that's the value, right? So, so the heart is, what we, if we lose, are we, how are we going to take it? Are we going to be sore losers? Are we going to like hate the opponent? How are we going to approach the opponent? You know, or are we going to be motivated to improve, right? So, so on to the last question. You know, when we were probably growing up, you know, the only people that would get awards or the only teams that would get awards is the first, second, and third, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have the individual award, which is the MVP, and then the best goalie or best uh, uh, best three-point shooter. So you have these individual goals. Nowadays, 
nowadays, even if a team just participates in a league, they're already given a trophy. They're given a trophy. They're given a trophy for participation. Do you think this is hurting or helping uh, the athlete? Who wants uh, to get since Clara, you already gave up the thumbs up. So. <laughs> I, I gave the thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, you gave the thumbs down. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Say <laughs> I say it's a big no no to give trophies because you're rewarding participation. You know, it takes effort to show up. But yeah. when, but you got to award the guys who are on top, of course. And look, you get a trophy for what? Finishing maybe 12 out of 12, maybe, but That's 12 out of 12, yeah. maybe, but. When you look at the record books, when you open the records of a tournament, who are there? Mm. Teams one, two, and three, and maybe your best 11, and then maybe your, or maybe your mythical five in the case of basketball, whatever, um, best players according to skills. So it ends there. Um, I think I'm at, when you were dictating the question, Claudia, I was even thinking twice. The participation certificate. Yeah. Because the certificate can't... No, because trophy is too much. The people, you get medals. No, they, they even give you a medal for participating. Yeah. I think a trophy, hardware, medal, trophy is too much. Oh, because you, you only put yeah. something if you are one, two, and three. And yeah. because you were saying that, I'm even wondering now. Certificate, um, certificate of participation. I'm thinking, I don't think so. I think you can only get a certificate of participation if you're in the worlds or Asians in some grade school tournament. But I'm actually thinking twice about certificates because they look like a trophy. Eh? It could feel like a trophy for the for the kid. Exactly, but yeah. it shouldn't. Yeah. Maybe, I, I, maybe I can recall getting certificates of participation in grade school. For, I don't even remember what. Not It wasn't even sporting related, so I guess I didn't care. Yeah. So it, it should be a letter... <laughs> stating or acknowledging that person X participated in this. A letter just for proof in case you need documentation in the future. But I think yeah. a certificate is too much because it, not, certificates normally have a seal and that yes. glorifies it and makes it look like a trophy. So you you can't, oh, right. you can't award or reward that. That's right. Kao yeah. Lance, since no one has CJ, you could go ahead, Lance. Well, there are some stories in sports that are worthy of trophy or accolades just by showing up. Remember that uh, team from, I believe it was Samar, who participated in the NBTC, traveled by land for like a day in a cramped van. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So by that alone, they deserve a certificate of participation just by sheer will to be there in Metro Manila to participate in the NBTC. But I guess uh, it boils down to maturity. So, mm -hmm. uh, for I, I understand for the younger athletes, there is uh, a premium of giving everybody something, accolades. Like, let's say, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds. You have to give them something as a form of motivation to move on, to keep going. Pero you can have a distinction wherein the medal of uh, the lesser place teams are smaller and then you give the bigger medals to the the be, uh, the ones who had better finishes so yeah. at least there's a distinction everybody gets something but there's a distinction why did he get a bigger medal so for a kid he would ask that why do they have a bigger medal mm. so it just so happened that they did better mm. and you having a medal it's uh, it's telling that young athlete you're good but it just so happened that these guys with the bigger medals they have trained harder, possibly. They have devoted more hours and they're just more skilled at mm. that moment. So that discrepancy in the medal can be a motivation for the guys who did not do well mm. to push themselves harder. Now, if it's your if uh we're talking about high school, college, and upwards, that's a different ballgame. Yeah. A high a high school player would be able to understand that if they lose, they lose. No yeah. medals, no certificates whatsoever, because they are already uh, they already have a certain maturity that if you don't push hard if you don't do your best then you will end up with nothing yeah 
So if it's a grade school competition, so I would see my uh, nine-year-old uh, nephew who plays football for Ateneo. He would always get uh, participatory medals in every tournament, be it Ceres, be it... I'm looking at his medals right now because it's in his room. In this room. <laughs> Ateneo Football Club, there is... So all of the tournaments they joined, they had a participatory medal. So it's a form of motivation. And then the champions, I was able to attend all of the tournaments, they had a trophy. So the, part, the, the teams who did not do well, they had medals only. The champions, they had big trophies. So there's a difference. Mm-hmm. So if it's a young athlete, you motivate them by giving accolades or trophies or medals in such a way that you're telling that you're good. Okay, that's why you deserve this. But look at the medal of the other team. It's better. Like, it looks shinier because they've been working harder. So that's how you motivate it at a young age. Pero if it's high school or college, alam mo na na, pag hindi ka talaga magaling, talo ka. So wala kang award. Ah. So you would, uh, uh, a high school or a college athlete would accept that better rather than a young kid. So um, giving accolades, it really depends on age. So if it's younger, you give everybody even a certificate of participation. Pero if it's uh, high school, college, and then the pros, kung sino lang talaga yung deserving, then those are the only guys that you give accolades to. Because not getting medals alone is a motivation for a high school, college, and pro player to do hard. Wala kami nakuha. Eh. Tama, tama. Actually, very good. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give my uh, insights after Jay naman. Hmm. Nawawala ka, but... Uh, Ito, can you hear me now, guys? Yeah, you're good. Yung internet ko nagbabubble pa rin. Pero I'll keep this short. <laughs> okay. My focus will never be on the tournament organizers. It will always be in the individual. When it comes to participation, certificates, medals, and all, it has to be, rel- it has to be relative to the individual's goal. Ano ba ang goal niya? Is he here for fun? Is, is he here for amusement or just to make some use of this speak and time, di ba? If, kung yun yung goal niya, fine, sige, certificate or participation would be nice, di ba? Pero, nawala ulit ata ako <laughs> kasi nag-freeze kayong lahat sa akin. Oh. Ako. Participation mo, nawawala rin nito. So, wala kang mo certificate of participation. <laughs> Nor, nor medal. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, so Jay, if you can hear me, I'll, 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 I'll uh, cut the short now. Para... Participation ko no, wala. <laughs> <laughs> Kailang yun. Nag-i- Sige. Nag-i-struggle ang participation ko. Ayan na. Ah. Can you hear me now, guys? Ayan, sige. Why don't, why don't you try audio lang muna? Tanggalin oh, mo yung ano. Yeah. Patayin ko yung video ko muna. Yeah, that's a nice idea. Yeah. Video ko muna. Tapos, yeah. Okay, parang ka na sa bubble naman yung qualifiers. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just saying, no? Uh, yung part, part the participation, medals, or trophies, or whatever, it has to be relative to the individual's goal. So, kung... Halimbawa, ako, kung target ko naman is maliba. Naging transformers ata yung ano yun, nasa bubble. Oh, oh, <laughs> for the sake of participating lang with the others, just by the top ako sa basura yan because uh, it's not nice sa akin trophy case eh. It's a sign of, medioc- of mediocrity and also, I don't want any of those in my trophy case. I just want gold, silver, and bronze medals or trophies in my trophy case. Again, it's relative to my goal because I want to be the best. Diba? Pero if I know I'm not good at it, gusto ko lang magpalipas ng oras just for the sake of participating, sige, ibigay niyo sa akin yan. It's fine. Okay, I think I, think I understood what you meant. Actually, that's, that's, mm. all of you have a, a good no, no, insights and in, in, in opinions. But for me, I, I growing up in the in the era when you don't get trophies or certificates when you're fourth, fifth, sixth, you know, player. It, it, uh, I agree in a way for for uh, in in with uh, what um, Lance was saying. It gives it, it inspires people also for for Jay na parang uh, 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 If my goal is to really just 
uh, win and be number one. Uh, I don't want to get a a, a, partic- a certificate of uh, or a tro- uh, or a medal for just participating because it'll just gather dust. But there is there is a study where uh, a longitude study when parents regularly overpraise their children's performances by giving them medals or trophies, their children more likely to become narcissistic in two years. Uh, but research did find that the best way to improve the kids' self-image is to help them develop their abilities. Uh, once they master their skill, they won't need manufactured praises, meaning no, they don't need manufactured medals or trophies. And they'll know it, you know, and, and they'll, they'll be, be thrilled that they've accomplished something that doesn't need a fabricated award. Uh, but people are saying that the, there's a part where their self-esteem is held uh, at one's childhood is when they see someone receiving a, a, a trophy and you don't get one, they'll feel degraded. Uh, and it's an honor for people naman to get, it, it, like what Lance said, at a young age to get a certificate. Diba? So it, it really depends on 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 your mindset, tama din si Jay, on where you want to go uh, in, 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 in your athletic career. No? But that's and if I, you, Yeah, sorry? And if you don't get a medal or a trophy, like what MJ says, quote-unquote, so I took it personally. Yes, I took it personally, <laughs> right? Diba? And then he went on to win six, uh, six trophies and uh, MVP mm. awards and, uh, you know, so. But uh, for me, I, I, I'm still in the in the in the place where high school, no participation, even at the, siguro, the ones that should get participate, you know, those trophies, small, small medals or small little trinkets are the, the young ones, the, are the young ones. But if you're already in a league, like a Kite Mosquito League or the Midget League, dapat wala na. It should be just the first, second, and third. Yeah. You know, but if it's, if it's like, you know, the little prep, prep you want to play in the schoolyard, yeah, you get small ones just to enganyo, di ba? Enganyo. But uh, I think that's the, the component of grassroots for me. I think an opponent of being an athlete um, is learning that it's okay to lose. It's okay to not win all games. And uh, winning is not everything. And winning does not mean that you should step on people's toes or you should cheat. I think that's uh, one thing that athletes should understand. No? And uh, one thing that we should also um, take in consideration is the body you have to take care of your body the health is what uh, claro said uh, the mind which is motivation and discipline and the heart how to bring uh your uh basketball or sports uh mindset into life what is your character outside the court and uh what is our character and who the heck are we we're still trying to find, figure that out and uh i hope by this 19th episode you guys are enjoying uh our talk. Uh, you could always follow us um, on uh, on uh, on uh, Facebook, which is uh, Who the Heck Are We? Uh, also on Instagram, which is Who the Heck Are We? PH. So we hope that you uh, also listen to us on Spotify and uh, and Apple Podcast. Listen to next week. Hopefully, we we get a. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna get a, uh, an, uh, an awesome guest. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lance, are we are we prepared for that? I think we have to. Okay. Well, it depends on uh, the availability of our special guests. Yeah. So, yeah. And so we're hoping that uh, he'll green light the topic so that he can join us. And, Let's uh, see. Yeah. We didn't and, promise a guest. We, we didn't, didn't promise, promise a guest. guest. And uh, hopefully it's an, an eternity of a very wonderful talk. <laughs> 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 so uh, so uh, this uh, episode is finished and uh, I hope a lot of coaches and, uh, and kids uh, will be listening to this podcast again uh sport is life but there's much bigger things than 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 sports and uh we love you guys all right